Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some stories about mass adoption, but underneath, the real question is, what's really going on? So first up, MicroStrategy buys more than $1 billion worth of Bitcoin, adding to massive holdings. This is published on Wednesday, February 24th, which is today. And the real question is, what was going on as everything was crashing? And was this a coordinated event? Not to talk about MicroStrategy doing it, but all these other big players, as far as like F2 Pool, BitMEX, and the shenanigans that were going on over at Kraken. So we'll take a look at that. Also, the MicroStrategy and Tesla stock and uh, how this has affected what is going on with their shareholders. On top of that, we're gonna talk about failure to report crypto on your tax returns can lead to trouble with the IRS. And it's not just me saying that, it's this new form for the 2020-1040 US individuals on top of the fact that I just received an email where one of my subscribers is getting audited by the IRS. So we'll take a look at both of those things and what is going on in the world but first, let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So first of all, today yeah, it is February 24th, 9 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. Welcome, good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you're at. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Here is what we got. Now, as we were talking about yesterday, it was one of those uh, kind of cruddy days in crypto yesterday when uh, everything just kind of fell down. And here we are uh, now. We're just below 50,000. Actually, when I woke up today, I usually wake up around 4 o'clock, just not a big sleeper anymore. And uh, I look, I rolled over. I'm like, man, it's pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin, I think, was like at 52,000, 53. I mean, everything was in the green. It just, it just looked fantastic. And then right around 6 o'clock, when I got back from uh, walking the dogs, uh, then all of a sudden, it just kind of dumped out. And uh, my friend George texts me. He goes, yep, morning dump as usual. And uh, I have to look at this. and I'm like, I think he's right. It seems like every single morning, <laughs> it's like things go pretty well over in the uh, overnight. And then in the morning times, you just you see like dumps. Now, it doesn't always happen like this, but this is where we're at. But we are back below 50,000. Bitcoin's like 49.7. Ethereum well below this 2,000 high, now at 16.53. But if you notice one thing, everything's in the green. And that's fantastic. And it's, it's something with the mentality of what is going on in the market. And people see green like, oh, well, good. Everything's everything's great. But you have to remember, uh, we were almost touching 60,000 uh, just a couple, what, three, four, five days ago. So when we take a look at this, it's just a mental way to look at things. And uh, a friend of mine, friend of the show, Diddy, over there at Bitcoin Family, he says it very, very smartly. He says, when in doubt, just zoom out. And if we just zoomed out of what is going on in the market, we can tell that this is just one of those one of those blips of the day. Now, what's great about this is it didn't, it didn't last too long and uh, we're already back to a recovery. But the real question is, what the heck is going on as far as what happened in the market? So actually, be before we do that, um, I wanna just talk about how yesterday I said that uh, I really didn't care that uh, uh, Bitcoin was going down and the entire market was going down. and. Uh, uh, I still don't care. So you have to understand that in the grand scheme of things, if you're a trader on positions and your leverage, you're going to care a lot, right? That's why I don't trade too much. First of all, I don't think I really have the uh, mentality for it. Uh, I'm mostly just a buy and hold guy. And uh, when I see these types of situations come about, I'm just like, well, you know, it, it is what it is and uh, it'll just rebound. And here we are. So what I talked about was I was going to buy the dip and I did. So when I see these dips happen, I will increase my dollar cost averaging by at least 20%, uh, if not more, and just start to pour more money in as I see these dips. And then the next day, hey, everything, next day, next week, next month, uh, usually, usually it, it rebounds and here we are. So if you, um, you don't, Sure. First of all, never take my advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice whatsoever. But if you did do that, you dollar cost average, you're feeling pretty good today. You're like, well, you know, if you got in pretty high and you dollar cost average, everything's pretty great. Now, the next question is, how did I do about what I bought? So we always want to take a look at uh, how everything goes against as far as like in Bitcoin. So this is over at CoinGecko. I switch this over to uh, not into dollars, but into how we would do if we just invest into Bitcoin. Well, if you invested into Ethereum, you're up almost 3%. If you invested in uh, Binance Coin, BNB, you're up 7% or 88% over a week. Uh, Cardano, 15% for the week, 34 for the day. And on and on we go. Ugh, I hate when it does this. Always just kind of pops out. And then uh, Uniswap, 22%, 23% for 
0.3% for Doge in a day. <laughs> Doge, 2.5. So when you're looking at these things and, and you're trading and you're doing all this stuff, some days you do pretty well if you go against the grain and don't put everything into Bitcoin and you go into the alts uh, like a Cardano, like a Uniswap, uh, like a Voyager, like those types of things. So it just depends on what you want to do. So just be aware of that is what's going on. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's jump into today's top story, shall we? All right. So first up, MicroStrategy buys more than a billion worth of Bitcoin adding to massive holdings. So... Uh, I was watching this video over at Cryptos RS. George, friend of the show, nice guy, does a lot of great uh, reporting. And he talks about, he's the one that, that talked about the F2, F2 pool dump and what's going on with BitMEX and all their positions and, and, and these whales moving things around. And it is, it is a shady thing, uh, but it just happens. So it doesn't matter if it's, if it's shady or not, it happens. So you just have to pretty much deal with it. And that's it. So when I hear about people going, you know, this is that's totally different, totally different now. Look, like I said yesterday, there's always going to be greedy people. There's always going to be whales. There's always going to be manipulators. So you just play the game. And uh, if they're going to manipulate and they're going to crash the price, what did we talk about yesterday? I said nothing. There's no changes in the fundamentals. Nothing changed with Bitcoin. There was no double spend. Like I said, Satoshi Nakamoto didn't come out and it was RuPaul or something crazy. It just... It, it doesn't matter. It's the, the same thing uh, it, across the board is true. So when there's no fundamental differences, there's no big hacks like a Mt. Gox, and then, then what are you left with? Manipulation. So my question here is, MicroStrategy has bought uh, more than a billion worth of Bitcoin. Um, smart move. So here's what happened. Uh, Bitcoin paid an average price of 52765 per Bitcoin, including fees and other expenses. The total holdings of the digital token is now at 90,000, uh, almost 100,000 uh, for Bitcoin. So you have to ask yourself, and I'm not saying MicroStrategy is part of this manipulation effect. Uh, that is for you to decide. I don't personally, I don't believe that. Um, but I do know that they work. Coinbase does pretty much their heavy lifting and they do all the microtransactions. So when when they see all the things that are going on, when they see a huge amount of influx or dump of Bitcoin onto an exchange, when they see a bunch of whales that are, you know, just dumping all, all their positions, they know, and now hopefully when you look at this, you should know, and I try to figure it out, is like, okay, well, you have to take a step back and take the emotions out. Did anything change? No. Fundamentals the same? Yep. What really happened? Whales. And then you just had to sit back and go, what, what's my position? So my position yesterday was just to buy, uh, increase 20%. I didn't buy any Bitcoin. Uh, I already have my positions in that. But I bought a bunch of Cardano. I bought a bunch of Polkadot. And I bought a heck of a lot of Voyager, um, which are the things that usually I buy every day. Anyhow, I just increase what I'm doing. And then today is a pretty good day. So when these things happen, just remember that uh, usually it's just a bunch of manipulation that's going on behind the scenes. And remember that we're still pretty early and it's a pretty small market. Even though we're at 1.4, 1 1.5 trillion, it's still pretty small. Whales manipulate and that's just what's going on. Anyhow, uh, that's what's happening here. I wanna talk about this. This is the MicroStrategy stock price. And you can see over a day, you know, just a little bit, not really too much, right? 730, 740. 727, uh, this is what's going on. Not really exciting, right? But when in doubt, zoom out, what do you wanna see? Well, you wanna see what's going on with the shareholders. Are they responding to MicroStrategy buying up the stock? Well, over five days, eh, really not so much. Look, we've had almost a thousand and he took a bit, a bit of a dump, 710. And this was, this today, February 24th. So of course, as Bitcoin crashes, takes a little bit of a dump, uh, what happens to MicroStrategy stock? goes down. But how did it do over the last month? Not too bad, actually. Uh, as they started to you know, increase their positions, they went from 540. That was their price. And in a very short amount of time, they increased their holdings of Bitcoin. Their positions as far as like their stock went up to, wow, 1,000. Let me blow this up so you can actually see it. Ugh, there we go. $1,272. That's amazing to go from, I mean, in the stock market, that's all, that's pretty crazy. So 540, this is over uh, one month period, 1272. Now we're down to a measly 
765. Not too bad. But remember, their first uh, BIOS or buy when they started to buy uh, uh, Bitcoin. If we take a look back at six months, that's what we're talking about. That's nice growth. And that is why MicroStrategy will continue to buy Bitcoin like crazy. And they don't care uh, whatever happens as far as a dip because they know if they hold, they'll be okay. Now, this is what MicroStrategy is doing. Let's take a look at what Tesla is doing. So Tesla here, see if I can get this in the right angle. Ah, there we are. So Tesla, the darling of, uh, of the traditional stock market, uh, they have actually, there's a story here, Tesla drops as much as 13%, turns negative for the year. Ooh. So this is over a day, and it went from 7-Eleven all the way down to 6 97 Well, that's great for me, because guess what I do is I buy Tesla stock, and I dollar cost average into that too. So today is a great day for me. It was a great day yesterday. Let's take a look over five days. Yeah. This is around where I got it at. And you can see that as Bitcoin dropped, so did Tesla, right? Interesting enough, because they put 1.5 billion. But let's just take a look over a month. Eh, not so much. How about six months? Pretty good. Year to date. Yeah, up and down, up and down, and over a year, and off we go. So is this because that they bought Bitcoin? Well, some of it, but not really. It's a great company. They put out a their, their earnings report has been pretty positive. They're doing a lot of great things. Uh, so Tesla is a is a pretty good winner here. But again. Uh, there was a gold bug. I will never say his name on the show. He is just a shill. Uh, <laughs> that's just what it is. I just don't understand. I, I don't understand the, the, the point of gold bugs and why they're so, and not all of them. Let me just say that. Not all gold bugs are like anti-cryptocurrency. I own gold. I own silver. I just own a heck of a lot more Bitcoin. I just don't understand what the problem is. If you are looking to hedge your bets, your, your, your bets against the traditional market, why wouldn't you put it into gold, silver, Bitcoin? I think that's the new savings plan in all honesty. So um, there was a back and forth between <clears throat> this gold bug and, uh, and uh, Elon Musk uh, because of the positions. And he's, you know, he talks about how, well, now the shareholders are going to riot against you because of uh, you know, what you did. And, and after 24 hours, it went down. It's just a marketing ploy. Really, if you take a look at it, what are the shareholders going to say when Bitcoin goes up to 100,000, 150,000 at the end of the year? And the stock price skyrockets, not just because of what Tesla is doing uh, as far as you know, pushing out all those, all those great cars and vehicles and things like that, but also the, the actual price of, of Bitcoin. It's going to go through the roof and everybody's going to be happy. The real question, and this is what I, my question is this, what happens when there is a bigger dip? 30%, 40% drop, because I know it's coming. I believe it's coming. Some people will disagree with me, but I think it is, things we talked about. That'll be interesting. With Michael's strategy, that's not going to happen because uh, they're going to hold everything because Michael Saylor owns the majority of the stock. And Tesla, it's a little bit different. So let me know what you think in the comment section about that piece, and let's move on to our next section. All right. So next up, failure to report crypto on your taxes can lead to trouble. This is mostly for Americans. So that's what's up. But uh, I just want to tell you that uh, people are getting audited already here in America. I don't know your tax laws over uh, where you're at. Uh, some people have it great. Some people do not. Us. And uh, here we are. So what's going on here? Well, Catherine Hauer, certified financial planner with Wilson David Investments, said this. And this was a good point. I never thought about this. She states, just because in one year, an entity that paid you doesn't report that payment, uh, a year from now, when that when the entity when that entity gets audited and issues a late 1099 form, the IRS will expect you to have reported what you earn. So, what is she talking about here? What she's saying is that if you have dabbled in cryptocurrency digital assets, pretty fair guess if you're watching my big face right now, that uh, you probably have at some point gotten into some type of uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, at some point, or a virtual currency, as they as they as they call it. So, if you don't report that that yes, I have dabbled in it or I have some, and then some one of the exchanges reports it, or somebody that paid you <laughs> in cryptocurrency reports it, or some service that you paid in cryptocurrency reports it, not just 
uh, you know, two years ago, but says, oh, you know, we got to do that because we just got audited. And then here we go. Now you're on the hook for that. And that is never good. Uh, take it from me, someone who has been audited before, uh, you do not want to go through that. It's awful. It's a uh, it uh, takes you out of your whole rhythm for what you're doing as far as your businesses. You're sitting down there with the IRS agent. You're pulling in all the different uh, uh, taxes and forms and, and receipts and junk that you're like, I don't know where it is. And you have to go back. It just, it's just awful. So just make sure you do, the, do things the best way that you can legally. And uh, things usually work themselves out. So uh, to finish this up, the IRS has put crypto front and center for this tax filing season. Uh, but high up on the first page of your tax return, there's a yes or no question is posed that says this. At any time during 2020, did you receive, sell, send, exchange, or otherwise acquire any financial interest in any virtual currency? What they are talking about is this form right here. So in 2019, this question was on the form, but it was buried in the 1040s. Uh, now, uh, let me blow this up so you can see it. It's uh, pretty much front, front and center right here under the standard deduction, very middle here. At any time. During 2020, did you receive, sell, send, exchange, or otherwise acquire any financial? Yes or no? So uh, you have to answer that, unfortunately. So here's the thing. Just know that there are four times when there is a uh, taxable event. And just buying and holding cryptocurrency doesn't mean you will be taxed on it. That's not, that's not how it works. So the four times is this. When you... Uh, exchange crypto for another crypto. So let's say you hold, you hold Bitcoin, exchange it for Ethereum, that's a taxable event. If you take uh, Ethereum and you exchange it for a stable coin, that is a taxable event because it's crypto to crypto. Crypto. The second time is when you, when you take your crypto and exchange it for cash. That is a taxable event. The third time is when you exchange your crypto for a goods or service, which is what I was under the impression I could do and not get taxed. And I was totally wrong because I was so excited when Tesla came out like, oh, we're going to, uh, you know, you're going to be able to use Bitcoin. I was like, great. I could just use Bitcoin and not pay taxes. Not so fast. There's a good. So you have to pay uh, the taxes on that if you use Bitcoin for a Tesla or if you pay like a, a contractor or something uh, for what they did in uh, crypto you get taxed on that. And the last one is if you get paid in crypto. So like if you're a miner and uh, you get paid in crypto, you are taxed on that event. So those are the four times. If you just buy, sell and hold, if it's in your ledger, you don't have to, it, it's not a taxable event, but you do have to just still say, did you receive, sell, send or exchange any crypto? Uh, you just say yes. And then in the rest of the forms, it'll tell, it'll talk about what you need to do. So in that situation, this is what is going on. But let me just, uh, Hell yeah. I got this email last night and from a subscriber and he says, Hey man, I'm going through a 2008, 2018 audit because of my Coinbase 1099k form they used. Any suggestions? So again, this is just what the lady was talking about. They didn't say it and maybe Coinbase didn't report it. And now all of a sudden they're going back and going, Oh, here's your stuff. Coinbase, huh? huh? How about that Coinbase? So in this situation, what do you think is going to happen? Not good news. So you're going to have to pull all your information out. You're going to have to go through everything. You're going to have to show them what you did. It's just a big pain in the A. So just make sure you get things going. So I will say this. If you have uh, that come up, uh, just use CryptoTrader.tax. This is, these are friends of the show, and uh, I use them. I This will be my second year using them. From the time that I actually uh, signed up and did it, took me 30 minutes, went over my CPA, done. There's a link in the description. There's two links. Actually, there's three links. One is a link that'll show you exactly how to use it. I did a, a walkthrough guide. The second one is uh, this. You can win a free uh, tax report, unlimited, $300 value. Just go to this page. Again, the link's there. Put a first name and email, enter to win. They draw one every single week. And the last thing is if you do, don't want to wait, uh, you get 20% off uh, for viewers or Dan. Just use that link, and that is it. And then also, I will say this. If uh, you are tired of paying taxes on everything, uh, there's an option, which is what I use, which is iTrust, where I take um, some of my post-tax money, I put it into iTrust, and I buy cryptocurrencies, uh, and it's not taxed. So uh, just to make this clear, uh, if you, first of all, if you have a traditional IRA, uh, old employer plan, like a 401k, a 403b, military TSB, or 457, you can move it tax and penalty free over to iTrust. Talk to those guys over there. There's a link in the description, gives you a discount. 
Go ahead and use that. Again, I've been using them for, my gosh, eight months now. And I maxed out 2020, and I just maxed out yesterday, uh, 2021, where I uh, put over uh, a big chunk of money, and I bought uh, Bitcoin. Actually, what I, uh, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, I bought a little bit of Bitcoin. I bought Ethereum, but I also bought a lot of Polkadot. And the reason why I did that is because, first of all, whatever the gains are from from here to whenever I withdraw, they can't tax me on those gains. So if Polkadot goes to $1,000 per dot, uh, whatever it is today, they can't tax me on that because they've already taxed my, my dollars that I get from my businesses, right? So that's great. Also, uh, in quarter two, I trust you're going to be able to uh, stake your Polkadot and your Ethereum and all the different staking rewards will go back into your uh, Roth IRA or iTrust account and uh, you won't be taxed on either. So that's why I try to max out Polkadot and Ethereum. So I think they'll be big as far as like staking rewards. All right, so that essentially is, well, that is pretty much it. I mean, lastly, I'll just say this, uh, I'm going to be attending this uh, event, it's a virtual one, but you got uh, Mayor Francis Suarez, City of Miami, Senator Cynthia Loomis, Wyoming, and uh, some other people, I guess. And it's all, it's all gonna be about the great crypto transition. So I wanna see what's going on as far as like, um, in the cities and local governments and in uh, uh, the US government, what they plan to do as far as Bitcoin. So I'll let everybody know how that works out and what's going on. And that is it for today. So if you made it all the way to the end, first of all, thanks, I appreciate it. Why don't you hit the thumbs up? That would really help uh, the channel and the algorithm. Also, if you like these types of videos, consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are uh, time sensitive. And uh, if you like this video, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right, let YouTube do its magic. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.